Fever, what's up? This is Rupesh Tiwari. Of course, rupeshtiwari.com. Today we are going to cover about JavaScript selector function. And yes, make sure you have subscribed this channel if you have not done yet. So let's get started. Selectors are pure functions that returns the derived data from a given object. This is a very common scenario where in web application you want to do validation. You want to check before submitting a form that if your form is valid or not. Imagine the situation where user has entered the first name and user has not yet entered the last name. Do you want to allow the user to submit that form? No. Therefore, in order to do this kind of validation, you want to write a selector function on the last name and on the first name. The selector function will get the form data and it will check if first name is valid or not and it will also check if last name is valid or not. If both the form fields are valid, then it will return true. That means it will say that form is valid. And by reading that data, we can always enable the submit button. If any of this function is returning false, that means the form is not valid and we can disable the submit button. Let's check this example. In this example, in this example, imagine that you are receiving a form object from the UI DOM element. Now you want to validate if the first name is valid or not. In order to achieve this, we will create some read only function. For example, I will create a function called as is first name valid. In this function, I will give the form object which is coming from the UI element. Once the form object is given to this function, I will create another function. I will call a secondary function called as get first name. This function is a very simple function with just returning the first name from the form object. This is the building block of the selector. So you create a very small function which will just read a single property and return that property value. So get first name is a function which takes a form object and returns first name out of it. Next, I will call is not empty string. Is not empty string is my utility function. That function will just check if the first name is valid or not. So here is the point where I can put my business logic. For example, when I say business logic, it is a presentation logic also. Is not empty string function. If it is not an empty string, it will return true. And therefore, we will return is first name valid as true. Similarly, you can write is last name valid and then finally you can combine both of them and check whether your form is valid or not. I will show you the working example of the JavaScript selector function in our upcoming video. However, let me just explain you why you should bother about learning selector function. What benefit it will give in your project. Before you want to learn, you should know this so that you get some motivation behind that and start learning more and more about selector. So the first benefit that I think the selector function gives us is it removes the unnecessarily data that you wanted to save in your form object. For example, if you wanted to check whether first name is valid or not, you should not store this value. If it is valid, then add true. If it is not valid, then put false. In the form object, you can just keep first name and last name. And then by using the selector function, you can always validate if the form is valid or not. Sometimes people write is valid, is first name valid, is last name valid, all of them in the form object and they always keep that data, which is redundant. Therefore, I can say the selector functions remove the unnecessarily data that you wanted to store in the form object. Since selector functions gives an easy way to compute or derive the business useful data out of the minimum set of given data. Therefore, we need not need to store the unnecessarily information into the store where state is saved. Example, if you have a shop object coming from server which has list of order line items, then in order to know the total of the order line items, we can always write a selector function that can go over all of the line items and compute the total price of that order. We don't need to store the total amount of the order in the order object. Hence, we reduce, we remove the redundancy from your project. 
selectors are item potent therefore you can call them as many times as you want however they will just return the same value as far as your arguments are not changed therefore they give lot of opportunity to improve and to maximize the performance of your project selectors are pure functions they do not have any side effects which means you can use them in reducer where you were writing code in redux or ngrx form selectors are pure functions that means they do not have any side effect they do not make any network call therefore selector functions can be readily used into the any redux based application for example if you are using ngrx angular project you can use this pure function selectors if you are using react over redux there also you can create your selector function and use this concept therefore i think selector function is very important and you should not miss that it is always advisable to create a separate read model in your application you know the command and query separation theory where we say that command should be separated from the query functions therefore selectors helps you to organize your read model of your project in a separate module itself if you have written selector functions for all of your pages in your application you can definitely create a separate module out of it and create a validation layer out of it selectors fit well in the redux based application like in angular ngrx and react redux kind of applications therefore i believe any full stack developer should know about the selector and it's just not javascript it's helpful to in any kind of language regardless whether you are doing client side or server side programming if you know this pattern you can use it in any language and in any side either it is client side or server side that's it for today's video what i will do in the next video is i will show you a demo where we will write together how a selector function can be used to validate the form i will show you the live demo for writing selector function to validate your form so stay tuned and see you in next video till then keep coding